Bird disease virus is a pesty virus. It's closely related to the virus that causes BVD in cattle. The most interesting thing about these viruses and why they cause so many problems is they can cross the placenta and infect the fetus. If a uh, you that has never met border disease virus before gets infected when she isn't pregnant, you will probably not notice that she's ill. She will produce antibodies and then, she's, then she'll be immune. Problems occur when a sheep meets border disease virus for the first time when they're pregnant. And the outcome then depends on the stage of pregnancy that infection occurs. But the virus damages the placenta and it also crosses to the fetus. So this slide shows a timeline from tupping through to birth. And between round about weeks eight and a half and 12, 12 of pregnancy, the lamb's immune system develops. If they get infected with border disease before this time, then a whole range of things can occur. The embryo or fetus can die. The ewe may return to service. The lamb could be mummified. You could get abortion or stillbirth. If the lamb is born alive, it may look normal. It could be weak, deformed, or you could have hairy shaker lambs born. These are lambs that have an unusually rough fleece um, and they're a bit trembly. All these lambs, whether they look normal or not, are persistently infected with border disease virus. They're so-called PIs. That's because the virus has infected them before their immune system has developed, so they don't recognise the virus as being foreign. And these are the most important animals when it comes to the spread of border disease, both within a flock and between flocks. If the virus infects the unborn lamb after its immune system, has developed, then it produces antibodies and gets rid of the virus. But the damage can still be enough to cause either abortion or stillbirth. Uh, but you may also get the birth of weak lambs or normal lambs. If infection occurs while the lamb's immune system is developing, either option can occur. Uh, so you can get a whole range of things there as well. So these persistently infected lambs are virus factories. They produce virus continuously from when they're born and they are a source of infection to all in contact sheep. They can remain healthy, appear normal and survive to breeding age, but many will become ill driven, scour and die perhaps around about weaning time. One thing that's important is if they survive and they produce lambs of their own, all lambs they produce will also be persistently infected with border disease. If it happens to be a top that's infected with border disease from birth, then the virus is detectable in their semen and they're often poor, poorly fertile. If you go and blood sample a range of flocks across the UK, you will probably find antibodies to border disease in round about a third of them. But I would be surprised if a third of people listening to this presentation are aware of border disease being present in their flock. And there's a couple of reasons for that, because when it infects a you out with pregnancy, you don't see any clinical signs, and also because of the movement of sheep from flock to flock. An animal could be infected in its flock of birth, and then it moves to a different holding. If you blood sample it, you'll find the antibodies, but it doesn't necessarily mean that border disease is present in the flock that it's currently in. So there's quite a short window of time during which border disease can lead to the production of persistently infected animals because of the seasonal breeding in sheep and the shorter gestation time compared to cattle. And also just because the way a lot of sheep are managed, it's harder for the virus to spread from animal to animal when stocking density is low. But on occasion, it can cause quite devastating losses. In this particular 300 ewe flock, they decided to expand their numbers. They bought in 225 mule gimmers from the market and they were mixed with the rest of the flock after a quarantine period. There were no problems identified at scanning time, but when it came to the following spring at lambing, there was a number of abortions. There were three lambs born that were trembly, and there were all sorts of problems with ill health in young lambs, which was quite unusual for the flock, and they had quite significant numbers of deaths. They tested six ill lambs for border disease virus. They were all positive. Then later on, they were still having issues with pneumonias in, in lambs as they got to about six weeks of age. And four of these that they were tested were also positive for border disease virus. So what's happened here is 
sheep that have never met border, di border disease before have been infected in, in the first few months of pregnancy. And that's resulted in the birth of persistently infected lambs. The other thing the virus does, if it infects a lamb, it can affect their immune system so that it doesn't respond properly to other infections. After lambing, all the bought-in gimmers were blood sampled as they were considered to be the most likely source of the virus. And when they looked at the UK numbers, they discovered they'd originated from 17 different flocks. They detected two border disease PI animals, which are different UK numbers, so they'd come from separate holdings. And because they didn't want to risk either retaining possible PI animals for breeding or selling them on to other farms, all the lambs born that year were sold fat. So how do you avoid problems with border disease? Sort of back to basics when it comes to boundary biosecurity, just preventing straying and nose to nose contact. There is a good blood test for border disease virus, so you can blood sample bought in animals. If you don't want to do that or that's too expensive to do, then it is certainly worthwhile if you're buying new replacements, keeping them separate from the rest of the flock until after lambing. That way, if you get any issues, you can investigate them and hopefully you're protecting the rest of the flock from the virus if it happens to be circulating amongst those bought in animals. So you should be investigating the cause of abortions, stillbirths, mummified lambs, weak lambs, deformed lambs, lambs with nervous signs or unusual fleeces. You also have to be aware of the risk of border disease virus infecting cattle. Now this appears to be quite rare in the UK, but if there's close contact, especially if cattle and sheep are housed together, then it can happen. And border disease might become increasingly important as eradication of BVD in cattle progresses because border disease can infect cattle. Equally, BVD can infect sheep, but the chances of that should get less as, as BVD eradication goes forwards. So what can you do following a diagnosis of border disease in your flock? If you identify any border disease virus positive lambs, then you should definitely blood test their dams because they may also be border disease virus positive. If you're looking for the possible source, then one option would be to screen all sheep purchased during the last 12 months. You could screen all the lambs born that year for border disease virus, but that's often too expensive to do. But certainly if you are wanting to either sell any of those for breeding or keep them for breeding yourself, you should definitely screen them for border disease virus because you don't want to be hanging on to these persistently infected animals. Alternatively, you can just sell the whole lamb crop store or fat, but obviously be aware if you're selling them store, you're potentially selling on a problem to somebody else. Following a diagnosis of border disease, you really need to have a sit down and a conversation about it with your advisors and look at the pros and cons of the different options. And in some instances, the decision might be made actually to do no testing at all and to rely on natural vaccination, so the virus spreading within the flock and generating immunity that way. Um, that in a lot of sheep flocks is probably not a very effective road to go down because, as I've already mentioned, when stocking density is low and they're in extensive grazing, then the virus spread can actually be quite low and slow. So what you can find is you may have grumbling issues in, in the years or carrying on from that, particularly in the younger sheep. So as I said, it's quite a complicated disease. There's a lot to think about. So if you have any problems or questions, then you're very welcome to get in touch and we can do our best to help you. Thank you for listening.